Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books channel. My name is Matt, and today we're going to discuss digital comics, what Amazon did, and how I have dealt with those changes. I'm making this video because it seemed like a lot of people might be dropping out of digital comics because of the change that Amazon has caused with Comixology. If you didn't know, recently Amazon absorbed Comixology and basically deleted their digital reader. And now if you were a Comixology collector of digital comics, your only option is to read it on the Kindle app, which is not made for comics. So there's been a bit of a learning curve. And of course, Amazon has said they're going to fix things and work on updating the app to help it read comics better. But there's other things that happened as well that I would like to talk about that I haven't had anybody else really talk about. Most people just focus on the app, less people focus on the actual buying of the comics, which became much harder. So I am what I like to refer to as a hybrid comics collector. So what that means is I have been reading and collecting physical comic books for a very long time. And like most of those readers, I do not like digital comics over physical comics, but I have found digital comics useful in a couple ways, mostly in space saving and not having to collect series I don't care about. So one thing that always used to happen to me is I'd go to the comic book store, I'd buy my regular issues, and then I'd start to browse and I'd see a couple titles that were from indie publishers or even DC or Marvel or Image. And it looked interesting. The cover was cool. The art on the interior was good or the writer was someone who I knew. So I'd pick it up on a whim and then I'd read it and not like it. And now I have this one issue of something or even worse, I would buy like the first three thinking, hopefully this will get better. And it didn't. And now I'm stuck warehousing these issues that I don't care about. So when I found Comixology, I was able to adapt this new hybrid approach where I buy my physical issues of the books I know I'm going to like, or at least I want to collect. And then I'll try out new books or new series digitally. And if I absolutely loved them, then I would go to the store and buy that series. Now I know what you're thinking, but Matt, doesn't that mean you pay double for an issue? And yes, yes, that does mean that. That is the only bad side to this. But if I like the series enough to buy it in physical copy, then that means I want it and I want to have it. So either way, I found a use for digital comics that was really helpful to me in keeping my collection to a manageable size and only collecting books that I liked and then being able to read as many comics as I wanted. And then Amazon had to go and fuck it up. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about and how I've had to deal with that and how Amazon basically made it harder for me to read digital comics. All right, so here is the Amazon Comixology page. So if you want to see the comics that came out this week, you can click new releases and it will give you the new releases for the most part. I have found that it mostly only gives you Comixology originals and only the bigger company stuff like Marvel and DC. But when it comes to indies, it doesn't have a lot of the actual new releases that came out. So if you scroll down, you can get to the section where it says it has all the new releases. And if you look, it starts off with the big two. We got Marvel and DC up here. We got some manga. But as you scroll down, you might notice the most indie stuff that they have are some original graphic novels. And then they have Archie Comics and Dynamite. And that's about it. That's the most indie that they get. If you go to this publisher section, which you should be able to search any publisher, they only give you a small choice of what is actually out there as far as publishers. Now, let me give you an example of what it should look like and what I've had to do to actually see what's coming out this week and not miss anything. So in order to see everything that's coming out, I have to go to this leagueofcomicgeeks.com website. You don't have to create an account with them, but if you do, you can track your polls and stuff like that. So I did. So this is actually what came out this week from every publisher. So it starts off quite the same where you have Marvel and DC at the top. But as you go down, I see some publishers that weren't there on the Amazon list, like Vault Comics, AWA Comics, Aftershock Comics, Behemoth Comics, Ablaze Comics. And if you go lower on this list, you see more titles from even more indie publishers like Xenoscope, Action Labs, Red 5, Scout Comics, and Ahoy Comics. So you might be thinking, well, that's just one extra step. It's not that big of a deal. Once I find the titles on League of Geeks, surely I can just type them into the search bar on Amazon Comics and find them, right? Well, that answer is tricky. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Say I want to read this Scout Comics Vanity Number 1. So I go to Amazon, and keep in mind, I am under the Comics, Manga, and Graphic Novel section. So I type in Vanity Number 1. I search. I find three graphic novels that aren't it. And then I find a bunch of other stuff that has nothing to do with comics because of course, Amazon sells everything on the earth. So good luck finding this. Now you might think, well, just put comics in the title. Now you remember we were already under that section of comics and everything. So you shouldn't need to do that, but 
when I do put that in the search bar, it doesn't find that comic either. Now, I just typed in Scout Comics with Vanity Number 1, and it did find it, but it found a physical copy that you can buy physically from someone who wants to sell it for 10 bucks. And if you look at formats and editions, that's the only format edition. There is no digital copy available. And if you're wondering, yes, I used to buy Scout Comics on Comixology without issue. So I picked a couple other random comics to try out and see if you can find them on Amazon. This one, The Wrong Earth, Fame and Fortune, number one, you could find, but you have to know what the title is. So you still have to use League of Comic Geeks to find out what's coming out that week. And same with the Xenoscope Comics, All Guts, No Glory, number three. You can find it on here but you have to know what it's called to search for it. And I don't know why they do this. It doesn't make any sense to me why they can't just have every comic that came out that week be on the new comics list. Comixology basically had the League of Comic Geeks list available every week that showed every new comic that came out that it had to buy. So the thing that's annoying for this is I would understand it if you couldn't buy it, like Scout Comics isn't on there because you can't buy Scout Comics on here, but you should be able to find anything that came out that week that is for sale digitally under the new comics list. And I don't know why you can't. So this is why I've had to kind of resort to other methods to read digital comics that I didn't used to have to do. Basically, I have to find them myself on the internet, either on the publisher's websites or some other methods. And I'm not talking about illegal methods. Obviously you can bit torrent this stuff or read comics for free from scan sites, but I don't like to do that. I prefer to actually support the comics creator because I like the medium. And even if I didn't like a comic, I especially think you should support these smaller companies that are barely on Amazon. Amazon is not promoting them or putting them on the actual new release website. So if I have to go to their actual website to to find and buy their books, then I'm definitely not going to go on like a BitTorrent site and just download them for free because obviously they're having trouble making digital sales. So one comic set I found that you can legally read for free is Hoopla. And if you don't know, Hoopla is a digital book and comic book and a bunch of other media platform for public libraries. So all you need is a public library card from your nearest library, and you can get access to all the comics that they have, even single issues that come out. For example, you could see what came out this week under just added to Hoopla. You could read Angel number four. Betty and Veronica 290, 291, Shadow Man by Valiant, Scorched by Image. So there's a pretty good smattering of comics on here. And I have found it useful for things like expensive hardcovers that I'm not sure if I want to buy it, but they have them on here. So I could read this stuff and then decide whether I want to spend 50 or hundred bucks on a hardcover. And the only bad thing about Hoopla is you can only check out a certain amount of books per month, just like the library. So if you're only reading single issues, that can kind of go away fast, but it's a good resource, especially for for trades or some of those bigger collections like I was saying. So before when I was talking about comics you can't find except on their own websites, Scout Comics was one of those, a lot of the 2000 AD stuff. So if you want to read Judge Dredd or Scout Comics or something, you can't find that stuff on Amazon. You're going to have to go to their website. Here's the Scout Comics website. You can buy their comics digitally. And I like to go through and let's look at new to old so you can see what came out that week. There's a couple comics that I reviewed recently, like Pentagram of Horror or Rad Wraith, that I was able to get on scoutcomics.com that I couldn't get at all on Amazon. And they even have a subscription box for just their monthly stuff. If you wanted the physical copies, but didn't have a local store, they will ship them to your house. And some of the other titles that you can't get were these 2000 AD comics. So you have to go to their website, and yes, this is kind of annoying because you have to make an account at each one of these websites. But I found this is the only way you can actually buy these comics digitally, and I want to read them. So this is what I've come up with. Now, if you could find the digital comics you want on Amazon and you have them in your library, you have two choices. You can go to your library tab and it will take you to your library of all the books that you've just bought. The problem is this is your cloud reader for Kindle. So once you open it on that cloud app, this is what you get. There's no options. There's no Zoom. There's no nothing. So when you go through this, all you get is two pages at once and something that annoys the hell out of me, which is double page spreads are thrown on a single page for some reason and shrunken down. For instance, this whole image is supposed to be two pages. Now we just saw two pages right here. It's big and nice and exactly the size it should be. But for some reason, they shrink it down and put it on one page when it's an actual double page spread. And God forbid there's actual dialogue on those spreads because you can't read it for shit. You can't click in, you can't zoom. I don't understand how this reader is supposed to read comics. Now keep in mind that is the cloud reader. They of course have a Kindle app. 
And that is pretty much the only way that I've found that you can read Amazon digital comics at all. At first, it looks just like the cloud reader, even with the double page spreads. But on this, you can at least zoom in, you double click onto the dialogue you want to read and it zooms in and that puts it in a comic panel reader view like Comixology used to have where you could read panel to panel. It's just worse than that one. So it'll zoom in on the dialogue so you can actually read it in the spread and it'll zoom out when you're done with that page, but then it'll continue onto the next page on the next dialogue dialogue and it zooms out so you can see the whole page but then i always click back out of it when i get to the next page because to read single pages is fine i don't know why they can't just do two pages next to each other for the double page spread here but they don't so that is how I have dealt with Amazon buying Comixology. And basically they just made it harder for me to read the comics I already bought and want to read. But there is one more thing I want to show you that is super annoying about Amazon. So as you might know, I am a big fan of Swamp Thing. I have bought a lot of the issues digitally before they were available in print again. So in my library, if I go and I search for Swamp Thing, you can see every issue I've bought it goes back all the way to the Alan Moore run in the 80s and even the stuff in the 70s and a lot of this stuff in the 70s was hard to find except digitally and they didn't reprint it very often so this was super nice to have well recently i was searching for something swamp thing related on amazon and i noticed they didn't have any of the old 70s issues so i actually checked just to make sure and you can't find any of the old 70s swamp things if you type in swamp thing number five you get the new run from 2021 you get the scott snyder stuff even the stuff from like the 90s and early 2000s but you don't get anything from the 70s the furthest back it goes is the 80s and that's super weird because as you can see i have swamp thing number five in my digital library and it is available to read on kindle but for some reason you can't find it when you search for it even though it is available in their digital library to read if you already downloaded it from comiXology now i've only found it on swamp thing but i'm sure it's other titles that you don't know until you go to try to read them I mean, yes, I can still read it because I bought it from Comixology, but I want other people to be able to read the books that I'm telling them about. And the fact that you can't just go on Amazon and find it is very annoying, especially if you just want to read it digitally and you don't want to spend the 40 or 50 or $100 to buy the omnibus collections or the big trade paperback collections. You know, if you just want to read the one issue or a couple issues, they're like $1.99 usually, which is much cheaper and much easier to see if you like it. So those are my thoughts on what's been going on. I really don't like that I have to go through all this effort to buy and find comics now but at least I was able to figure it out. I'm not a person who likes to cry over spilt milk. I like to find solutions on things. So yes, it sucked the first couple of days, but once I found out I could buy stuff digitally from the actual comic publishers themselves and finding out that the Kindle app is a much better reader than the cloud reader. And at least I can click into those double page spreads and it'll zoom in on the dialogue balloons. Obviously their comics reader technology is not as good as Comixology was or as user-friendly, but at the very least I can read the comics that I buy, at least the ones I can find on Amazon and do the reviews and stuff that I like to do for YouTube. So I hope this video helped you out if you were looking to buy comics digitally and you couldn't find them on Amazon or if you were having issues with the reader. I know I had issues with it, so I figured I'd make a video to show how I was able to work through these issues and still be able to read the comics that I've bought previously or want to buy going forward. And let me know down in the comments if you guys had any issues with this Kindle Comicsology merger and if you came up with any other solutions that I might have missed, let me know down below and let me know if there's something else you want me to talk about comics wise i normally just try to stick to reviews but i do have opinions on things going on in the comic book biz and with that being said we'll see you guys on the next one